Some of you remember we bought this $100 Harbor Freight cement mixer and I bought it off used on Facebook Marketplace. And we've got a, a slight problem with it. I'll bring you guys in and I'll show you, but we bought it like this. And it's a nice warm day and I want to try to clean this thing. You can see all of the built up uh, concrete or cement and stuff that's in here and this the problem that happens with the concrete that builds up here the dry cement sticks to this or that if it's moist so I'd really like to just get this stuff out of here I bought this cleaner stuff it's called it's by Sackcrete 100% biodegradable a concrete mortar dissolver so this stuff is supposedly meant for cleaning out things like this. Uh, safe, environmentally friendly, liquid alternative to aggressive acid concrete removers. Concrete dissolver can be used to remove cured cement, concrete mortar, or stucco from most surfaces. So they say to saturate the area, do not rinse, it will turn white on contact and then darken allow the dissolver to penetrate for 15 for 10 to 15 minutes then reapply to same area keep surface wet with concrete dissolver rinse with cold water with a garden hose so I also wanted to mention if you have concrete don't rinse this out this mixer out on the concrete because it'll dissolve <laughs> this concrete that you don't want to have dissolved Rinse with the cold water in a garden hose or a pressure nozzle. Or you could also use a pressure washer on extra thick buildup. Repeat. So it's pretty simple. Just let this stuff work and give it some time. So I've tried this a little bit to start with. I've kind of wet things down. That side's wet down. So once it turns white, we'll uh, start uh, scraping this stuff off. Now, I think what I'll do just to make things a little bit easier I think I'm going to take both paddles out of this thing and also take the take this drum and split it in two and then I can very easily clean this so I think I'm gonna do that first uh, with these paddles in here uh, it's not I mean you can get in there it's just not the easiest but I'll try taking this apart if uh, I suspect that this is going to be all stuck in here pretty good. So we'll see. We'll see what will happen. So let's uh, get out some tools and start taking off these pieces and parts. I wanted to say I'm not a professional at doing this whatsoever. I'm just trying to clean this mixer out the best that I can. The other alternative to this cleaner was muriatic acid and muriatic acid can cause blindness and all sorts of other unwanted things so that's why I chose this <clears throat> so that uh, you know we wouldn't nothing like that has a chance of happening so I'm just taking apart this drum just kind of using some hand tools and my Milwaukee impact the drum did stick together the concrete had kind of sealed everything up so I did have a little bit of a hard time taking the two drums the two halves of this drum apart but it really wasn't that bad and I've got to say I'm I'm really glad I did this this concrete it it would actually slow down the process of pouring a pad having this concrete in there mainly because like I said that stuff was sticking to it so then you had to turn the mixer off get in there with the shovel scrape it off and then you could finally get back to mixing again so you know you had to do that every couple times that you loaded this thing so I'm just using that Sackcrete uh, concrete mortar dissolver stuff and it did it worked pretty good but what I found out that works even better you see me over there with a rubber mallet if you hit the side of the drum with a rubber mallet uh, a couple times and go in some different spots and stuff 
that alone will likely crack a lot of this off. I feel that this, the biodegradable uh, sacrete mortar dissolver stuff, I feel that stuff is really meant for small thin areas of concrete buildup on stuff like this. It'll take forever for it to dissolve anything over an eighth of an inch. And three sixteenths and a quarter inch is, I wouldn't say it's out of the question, but you've got a lot of stuff that is there to dissolve. So just hitting that side with the rubber mallet actually seemed to work quite well. I think it actually worked better than the mortar dissolver did actually. Just a couple good wax with that and it definitely just loosened it all up and it kind of just how I have this sitting it all landed in the first drum and then the first drum I put this box on the right hand side of the screen under it and then I just uh, pull the handle over on the left side of the screen for this mixer and just dump the whole thing. So, you know, I'm just kind of just cleaning this thing up and I'm, I'm really trying my hardest to get as much of this hardened concrete out of here the best that I can because it'll mean less buildup in the future. You know, if you try to keep these things clean, it should be more, more likely to not clog up. But I, there was concrete in here that was approaching a quarter of an inch thick and it's if you let it build up more and more and more and more uh, you can't put as much concrete in here because this is it's already full of dried concrete so I just kinda hit the sides of this and then just take the scraper and just try to scrape as much of it off and I also put that uh, sacrete mortar dissolver stuff on there. Now I'm sure the the muriatic acid would have worked really good like I would have just poured that on there and instantly it would have taken it right off. So that option this was that uh, mortar dissolver stuff that costs like 13 or 15 bucks something like that and a whole gallon of muriatic acid was like nine. So this is almost, well, not quite double, but, and it's less quantity. So, you know, you definitely get a lot less with this, but I'd rather not have to wear a respirator and gloves and, you know, eye protection or, or goggles and uh, all sorts of safety stuff to do this because, it, you know, like I said, that muriatic acid, it could cause blindness and all sorts of other things. So I didn't, like I said, I didn't want to deal with that. And this stuff, you know, I'm just using a scraper here and I don't have any, I just have my normal glasses on, I, no respirator and no gloves. But they say, you know, you're not supposed to breathe the fumes and this and that, <clears throat> even in this stuff. And if I used the muriatic acid then what do I do with all the concrete that is in this would I add like I don't know baking soda or something to neutralize it and then you could just throw this concrete out or I don't really know but you know this this concrete here literally I could just go dump this in the driveway or something and you know it'd be gravel wouldn't be very good gravel but you know it'd be you know it's not going to hurt anything and I'm at the stage now where I'm seeing that this is actually working quite well. Like I said, I split those two halves and took out the paddles. And I'm really glad I did that. There was a gasket in between here. And I think whenever I put that stuff or put the gasket back together, I've read reviews online of people saying that there is... A leak that this thing will leak if you know when you put the two halves together with the gasket and everything so I wanted to I want to make sure that there isn't going to be any leaks in this thing whatsoever so I think I'm gonna put a pretty hefty bead of silicone just caulking you know indoor outdoor caulking 
on both sides of the gasket. And then I think I'm also going to put some on the inside also just for an, an added extra layer of protection because I do not want this thing leaking you know with that concrete kind of sealed everything up in the whenever we first got this so you know I didn't know if this thing leaked or not but I think that is the plan for putting this thing back together to be a bead of silicone on each side of the gasket and plus the with the silicone it'll help hold the gasket in place whenever I put things back together. This mixer was not difficult to take apart whatsoever and you know what's nice with when we bought this thing used uh, someone else had already put it together so we didn't have to put this thing together at all but of course you know something that's used uh, you kinda have to do stuff like what I'm doing and clean this thing out so I will try my best to uh, not let this cement mixer get like this I will try to make sure that I take the garden hose and I wash this thing out and then hopefully we wouldn't have any have any problems like this in the future you know if you it goes back to that old saying if you take care of your equipment or whatever it is it'll take care of you so that's kind of what what I'm thinking with this thing and you know it's not that often that we use this this is just kinda taking up space now in the back barn or in the back of the barn so I think I'm gonna move it up to the other one and then it's really totally out of our way so now I'm cleaning up these uh, mixing paddles and just the scraper and that mortar dissolver stuff it worked pretty good to dissolve help loosen up the concrete in on on these paddles and I'm just using that bottom drum as kind of something to hold the concrete in and then like I said once I'm done I'll just tilt that over with the box under it and just dump it right in but I, I have to say we probably got about maybe 10 pounds of concrete out of this thing maybe 15 at the most so it's not a whole lot but I'm really really glad I did this it'll definitely make this thing last well not last longer but it'll work much better so like I said I'm just trying to clean this thing the best that I can I'm using that some simple green you know it's funny I'm using all 100% biodegradable stuff here that mortar dissolver and the simple green which seems to work pretty good on stuff like this it's probably not the best thing out there but it works pretty good and in case anyone's wondering this mixer is actually brown in color it is not orange or red like the new Harbor Freight mixers are this one is brown in color because this is a 2002 model I think 2002 so that would put it at 16 years old and <laughs> who said uh, Harbor Freight stuff doesn't last that long right here we are almost 20 years later and I'm just uh, cleaning this thing out and you know it's pretty much ready to be used for the or whenever we need this thing for the next time now since I'm running over this thing with a scraper I did end up scraping a lot of the insides of this barrel and stuff so maybe at some point I don't think it would you know, I don't think it would rust or anything, but, you know, bare steel, I don't see why it wouldn't. So maybe at some point I'll paint the inside of this barrel. I, I don't know what color I could paint it brown again, but... I guess in 2002, whenever Harbor Freight sold this thing, this that's the color that they made these, and they've now since changed to red for the smaller one and orange for the bigger one. And this is the bigger mixer that Harbor Freight sells. So I'm just kinda cleaning off this gasket here and making sure we get a 
very good seal in between these two halves of this barrel. Now that all of this cement and concrete is off of this thing, I can put this thing back together. I have this thing pretty well cleaned up. I might go over this piece here, this drum with uh, a rag or something and just trying to clear and clean it off even more. But I, I will tell you what, this is a thousand percent better from what it was. I'll bring you into the other one and you guys can see that also, or to the other half. But this thing, it looks, this is so much better than what it was. It's, uh, it's really, it's really surprising. So this mixer doesn't really even look like it's the same one. Uh, it looks much, much different. I did scrape up the inside of this thing a bit, which isn't really going to hurt anything. I don't really think so. So this sackcrete stuff, concrete mortar dissolver, it worked pretty good. Um, would I buy it again? Eh, maybe, maybe not. You definitely have to let it sit for a while, and then hopefully you just kind of scrape scrape things off the best that you can but it's definitely better and uh, I had the, I got the paddles cleaned also both paddles are cleaned so they look pretty good and shout out to uh, to Dollar Tree here we have a Dollar Tree scraper I'm pretty sure that's a Dollar Tree Dollar Tree scraper Dollar Tree mallet for hitting the sides of this thing uh, Dollar Tree paper towels and even a Dollar Tree, I think this might be a bottle of LA's Totally Awesome that I use. I have Simple Green in there that I use to clean this thing up. So uh, this stuff we bought up at Ace and I mean it worked. It worked okay. Would I buy it again? Uh, versus the alternative, probably. The alternative was like muriatic acid, I think, and that is much more harsh than that. And it probably would have worked better, you know, if the... Whatever it is, if it's really bad for the environment, it'll work really good and it'll last really a very long time. And if it's good for the environment, it uh, usually doesn't work that well. So this stuff works. It worked all right. And I figured out the when you had a big buildup along this edge here, what you do is you'd spray that stuff on the all over where you had to clean up the uh, cement, the dry on cement, but focus it mainly in between the area. If it's a really thick buildup, focus it in between the edge here and the concrete itself. So not on this side, uh, not on the outside of it. Focus it in in between on the basically on the crack there that there is. But hitting this mixer with a dead blow well this isn't dead blow this is just a mallet but it this really really worked very well um don't use a ball peen hammer don't use a regular hammer just use a use a, a mallet and don't hit super hard so i'm going to probably assemble this thing either tonight or tomorrow but for you guys it'll be in a couple of seconds so there you go, that's uh, cleaned up this mixer a lot better. And I think I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. The main reason why I did this is when you have the dried cement in here, concrete or whatever it is, mortar even, what you're mixing will tend to stick to that. When these sides are smooth like they are now, the concrete is less likely to stick to it. And the buildup just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. The previous owner that owned this, uh, he bought it from a guy. We're like the third or fourth owners of this thing. And he, uh, I guess there was a storm or something coming, and he didn't have time to get out the rest of the concrete mix or whatever. So that's why this thing looked the way that it did. And now that I've cleaned it, I'll make sure that I'm not going to be pouring concrete, hopefully, when there isn't a storm coming. So let's put this thing back together again. Now that we are finally done chipping and scraping out the concrete that was in here, I'm putting this gasket on and 
<laughs> the funny thing is, is this gasket still has all the creases and stuff in it from when it was packaged up 20 years ago. So, <laughs> I guess that uh, the rubber maybe has a memory from whenever it was first made. But I put two beads of silicone on there, made sure both surfaces were as clean as I could possibly get them. And I also wanted to mention, make sure that you line up the holes for the paddles, because if you don't line up the holes for the paddles, uh, you'll have to take all this back apart again, turn the barrel around, and line up the holes again. So fortunately, I've, I had forgotten about that, and just the way that I put this together was the way that the paddles went right in and they fit so I really lucked out there <laughs> but I'm just using my impact and a wrench I think it was a 10 millimeter here and the bolts for the paddles were like an 11 and a 12 or something something like that uh, these this being a Harbor Freight tool and you know, so basically a Chinese product. They use the metric system over there, so I can pretty much guarantee that this is all the fasteners on this are metric. And you know, on my old Sears Suburban tractor, everything on that is SAE. So you know, you just kind of have to think a little bit beforehand. You know, where was this thing made, and who made it, and you can pretty much figure out where it's most likely, you know, which set of sockets or wrenches or whatever, uh, SAE or the metric system. So now I'm making sure that the gasket is pushed in on the barrel, you know, it's not sticking out anywhere. And I'm just running, an, running a couple beads of silicone all around it on the inside there on both sides of the gasket and I'm just smoothing it out with my finger because like I said I, I really don't want to have any leaks on this thing and I should have this sealed up enough now I do not know if the silicone is going to hold up to mixing concrete uh, that stuff is pretty tough so I don't know it might it might not but now I'm putting in those paddles and the bolts, like I said, I think the inside nut was a 12, and then the outside one was a an 11 millimeter. And I actually did, we have a, a sort of a big dent on the front side of this thing, and I just kind of took a, a regular hammer, and I was able to pretty much straighten it out pretty good. It definitely looks a lot better. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see I'm using the hammer. There you go. The cement mixer is all back together. I have the gasket in. I put silicone on both sides of the gasket. And I, what helped is putting in these screws, put the gasket on this half, this top half, and then put these uh, bolts with screw heads on them, thread them through the gasket up, uh, Put your silicone on first, then script, then put the screws through the gasket, and then that'll kind of help to keep it in place. And then you can just flip this whole thing over, and pretty easily you can put this together. And also, make sure that these two holes are lined up. It just so happened to be I lucked out for once that these holes lined up. I totally forgot about these lining up, but... I really lucked out there, and these paddles are definitely back in the same places that they should be. There's a little wear mark right there, and uh, it looks it looks pretty good. It's definitely a lot cleaner, and I was able to get this dent out on the side here. There's still this little bit, but I think that's pretty good, or at least good enough for for us. So, well, there you go. That is how you take the dried out cement concrete. Uh, whatever you have in here out 
that's uh, dried and it's been in there for a long time I'm sure so oh and I also did put uh, silicone all the way around on both edges of that gasket the top and the bottom and uh, I know that'll probably get worn away but I don't know we'll see so hope everyone enjoyed this video and if you would don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more and hopefully we will see you all in the next one thanks for watching